When you think of homebrew, you might think of beer, but that's not always the case. When it comes to retro video games, a homebrew refers to regular users and enthusiasts creating a new game for an old system. Some of the most popular systems to create homebrews for are the Atari 2600 and the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and even more modern systems such as the Sega Dreamcast. But homebrews can be found on just about any system you can think of, including the Commodore VIC-20. Today I'm going to review three VIC-20 homebrews created by VIC-20 programmer and enthusiast Robert Hurst, Quickman Plus, Berserk MMX, and Omega Fury. When most people think of homebrews, they think of games that were made by enthusiasts long after the system has left store shelves and been relegated to the realm of damp basements and dusty attics. Robert Hurst, however, originally created his Pac-Man clone in 1984, and it only took a week. Due to the directions life was taking him, Quick Man was put away until decades later when he dusted it off, optimized it, and presented it as the finished version you see before you. Now I can't speak to the game's original code, but this Pac-Man clone is extremely well done. The graphics, sound, and music all bear striking resemblance to the original arcade game, and the computer AI is very challenging. The monsters, or ghosts, which by the way all have all been given cute names like Abraham, Rebecca, Isabella, and Peanut, they all have an uncanny way of doubling back and sneaking up behind you, usually coupled with another coming at you from the other direction. I've been trapped many times by this above average AI. All the levels and fruit seem to be well represented, and the mazes are diverse and fun to play. There are also many options for choosing your players, your level, and your maze. The quality of the game is amazing considering the limitations of the system, which reminds me, all three games in this review require the 16K RAM cartridge to play on a real VIC-20 hardware. Quickman is certainly one of the best Pac-Man clones I've played on any system from this era. If games of this quality were available in 1984, I think the VIC-20 would have sold a lot more units. It would have been the system's killer app. In short, Quickman is a winner. Of the three games in this review, Berserk MMX easily ranks as my favorite. I grew up playing the arcade original on a regular basis, and the Atari 2600 port got a lot of playtime in our house. Berserk remains to this day one of my all-time favorite classic video games, and Robert Hurst's remake on the VIC-20 is as close to the original as possible. My only lament is the lack of voice synthesis from the robots to stop the humanoid and chicken fight like a robot, but it's a minor omission that does nothing at all to hamper the fast action and gameplay. The challenge ramps up quite quickly, and the sheer amount of robots, or Cylons if the title screen is any indication, will leave your twitch finger calloused and bleeding, but in a good way. I noticed something interesting playing both Quick Man and Berserk. I think our favorite dot muncher doubles as the evil Mr. Otto in Berserk as well. I'm not sure, but I'll let you decide. This game is actually very recent, having just been released in March of 2010, and I must say, I'm addicted to this. You see, Mr. Hurst and I have been communicating via PMs on YouTube, and he graciously sent me copies of these three games on cassette to play and review on my VIC-20. Once I tried Berserk, I kept resetting it over and over, trying to beat my high score. This alone is the best accolade that I can give any video game, the desire to play it again and again, always coming back for more. I can't say enough about this great clone of Berserk. Lack of voice synthesis aside, it's about as perfect a clone as I've seen on a home console without playing the actual arcade ROM itself. Berserk MMX is a must-have for fans of both the original and fans of the VIC-20. The third and final game in this review series is Omega Fury. It has the distinction of being the only game that is not a port of an existing game, but is actually a sequel. It's a sequel, of course, to Omega Race, 
a game that has its best home port on, you guessed it, the VIC-20. Robert Hurst has created a backstory for the sequel. It seems that the Omegans, the race of people you the player belong to, have gone exploring in the wrong galactic neighborhood and provoked the not very nice Thargoids, who it seems have decided that they like where you live and would like to live there too. Unfortunately, they don't want to share and have decided that the Omegans should leave, in pieces if necessary. As in any good video game story, you are the lone warrior piloting the Omegans' newest starfighter, and your objective is to defend Omegan star portals and ships. Gameplay is very similar to the original Omega race. You fly your ship through space using a joystick to steer your ship around the screen, fighting off the evil Thargoids who want nothing more than to destroy you and your ship being protected in the middle of the screen. Upon your untimely death, all enemy ships converge on the defenseless Omegans in the middle until it's space dust. Omega Fury has added a lot more gameplay elements with a bevy of enemies and their weapons that you must defeat. There are scout ships, cruisers, destroyers, and space carriers. Like Omega Race, you must not only be wary of the enemy ships, but of the mines and bombs that they leave scattered on the screen, such as grenade mines, hull blasters, sonic boomers, and the heart stopper. I'm not sure I want to tangle with that. All the while, you must protect your Omegan heritage, which comprises of the Academy, Star Portal, Cargo Craft, and medical supplies in the middle of the screen. You control your ship with the Atari 2600 Asteroid style of control, which works perfectly. Push the joystick forward to thrust, pull back for braking thrusters. An interesting tactic programmed into the game is that your shots are more powerful if you shoot conservatively, as each successive shot has less power. So shooting less often, but more accurately, will help you win the war. The bottom left will show the status of your ship, going from green to red and critical just before the Thargoids deliver the final blow. Again, this is a game that I kept playing over and over, trying to get further and further. The levels get much harder with swarms of enemies that move faster and whose shots are deadly and precise. I really enjoyed how the game ends, with the player watching helplessly as the Thargoids destroy the precious Omegan ships. All the more incentive to win the next time around. Robert Hurst has created some real homebrew gems for the VIC-20, and I can only hope that he continues. He definitely has a fan in me. This is Atari Leaf with a special thanks to Robert Hurst for his generosity and assistance in allowing me to play and review these great VIC-20 games. Have a great day, everyone.